On Wednesday, 4th of February, Senusha, the Senusha Trade Export Promotion Agency, TIPA, operating under the Ministry of Commerce, Business Development and Consumer Affairs, in association with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food Production, Fisheries, Cooperatives and Rural Development, will host an Agriculture Value Chain Symposium at the Golden Palm Event Center in Rodney Bay under the theme, Developing a Shared Vision Towards Increasing Agricultural Exports. The exercise is geared towards establishing a, a shared vision for the sustained export of St. Lucia agricultural commodities in identified priority markets. Since its establishment in 2011, TIPA has conducted market research, promotional campaigns, and recognizant missions in identified priority markets that would be Europe, the United States, Canada, and the Northern Caribbean. The findings of these initiatives reveal significant interest and demand for both traditional and emerging agricultural commodities. To respond uh, to the commodities arising from these missions, the agricultural sector must employ good agricultural practices, adhere to stringent market requirements, compete with stiff regional and international counterparts, and establish regiment that will ensure adequate supply levels. And time now for the CDV Environment Watch. Here's Dennis Springer as the focus continues on the impact of drought. Welcome to the segment of the news where we look at global warming and climate change. On Wednesday, we looked at drought and the devastating effect it can have on the economy of a country during the period of that drought and the after effects when the rain finally arrives. We pointed out that it takes a long time for farmers and the rest of the populace to recover from a bout of drought. The reason is simply that the land has to recover and any damage done to agricultural products take time for farmers to begin to produce sufficient food for the economy. One of the major problems economically that the country has to face is that vast amount of food that has, that has to be imported, thereby severely affecting our balance of payment because we are importing far more food than necessary than we are exporting as it will take time because of the recovery process of the land and what is being grown. Some of the measures that government can take to mitigate the effects of a severe drought is that there should be subsidized, the subsidization process for all house owners who are prepared to put two or three water tanks on their premises. Further to that, VAT should be removed immediately on water tanks. In effect, government should litigate that all new houses of a certain dimension should have its own rain depositors so that in the time of rain, this can be seen as a catchment process. Further to that, the time has come when all farmers should help to have some should be helped to have some form of drip irrigation on their farms. I also believe that they should also have greenhouses so that there will be a rotation of crops, which again will help the soil. Legislation must be severe on anyone found cutting down on slope areas for the planting of bananas or otherwise. The idea of willfully cutting trees on slope areas should be a culpable offence and a, a severe fine implemented. Government must make a great effort to protect the rivers and other catchment areas that are used as sources of drinking water. Once again, a heavy fine should be imposed on those who willfully break the law, especially those who wash their cars in rivers, more so during a drought period. I am of the view that the government must also make every effort to build more dams around the country so that more water can be stored. What we are seeing during the rainy season is that an abundance of water run off to sea. This in my view is sacrilege. Global warming and climate change now demands that every country, large or small, develop, develop in a, or underdeveloped, rich or poor, put some measures in place to combat those twin peaks of global warming and climate change that I speak about. There are many other measures that government can take, but the will must be there. One question I would like to ask the government, should a drought suddenly hit us this year, if the five-year cycle becomes a reality, what measures do they have in place 
to combat a shortage of water, bearing in mind that the desilting of the John Compton Dam has not even begun. Remember, that would be happening when our tourism sector is seeing a healthy improvement and thereby bringing in some help for our foreign earnings, both to the government and the people of St. Lucia. I therefore say to the government that the procrastination should stop and every effort to be made ex expeditiously to alleviate any problems that may pursue should a drought occur. Remember, ladies and gentlemen of the government, that the tide and time waits for no man.